Hi, I'm Mark Fleischer. You have five minutes? Five minutes, that's all I need. Maybe 10. There's a constellation of illnesses called immune-mediated inflammatory disorders. They're illnesses that are seemingly unrelated, but really they're all the same. They just have variable expression. Immune-mediated inflammatory disorders are, are basically initiated by an over-exuberant and inappropriate production of things called cytokines. Those are protein mediators that usually fight an infection. Now, normally, if you have some sort of infection, you make these appropriately and you get rid of the infection. But when you don't have something to, to fight and you make these cytokines, then you start fighting yourself. That's an autoimmune illness. Types of immune-mediated inflammatory disorders are psoriasis, rheumatoid arthritis, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, Bichette's, Ryder syndrome, sarcoid, H. suprativa. There's a whole host of illnesses that are seemingly unrelated, but they're actually all the same illness, just with variable expression. So 3% of the U.S. has psoriasis, 2% has RA, 1% has IBD, 6% of the U.S. has one of these illnesses. If you ever notice that all these illnesses, we use the same medications. So one week you see on TV that this drug is being used for psoriasis. And then later on you see it on another channel, it's being used for RA. And then on another channel you see it's used for Crohn's disease. They're all the same illness. It's all the same pathophysiology. So really our job is not to treat that illness, but to treat that immune system. It's 50 years ago that someone realized, uh, uh, several people realized, that this was the issue. And so they started giving immunotherapy agents. These immunotherapy agents would dampen the immune response that was produced inappropriately in these patients who have an imid. Can you imagine the, the courage it took to take a chemotherapeutic agent for psoriasis or for diarrhea? That was amazing. Can you imagine the courage it took to write those prescriptions. Well, it's 50 years ago. Let's walk our way through the different medications that are available. So first we started off with five ASA products, and they're all the same. Uh, the efficacy is pretty much the same. There are several meta-analyses showing that not one is any better than any other. So all the five ASA products, all the mesalamine-based products, they work, but maybe 25% of the time in the 25% that it's indicated for, which are people with mild disease of the colon not even with the small intestine. Small disease activity, mesalamine products have no proven efficacy. So it's 25% in the 25% that it's indicated for. That's not very good. Then you have steroids. Steroids are effective. They're very effective. They're our most potent immunosuppressive agent. That's a word I want you to keep in mind, immunosuppression, because that's what this talk is gonna be about, or this, this chat is gonna be about. Steroids are very effective, but the problem with steroids is that that there's an old study by Pia Munkholm in Crohn's disease where 20% of the patients, when you give them steroids, they don't respond at all. 22% will be okay after two years, and everybody else is going to relapse, which means 78% of the time, you better find something to replace and augment steroid therapy. Well, that's how we got to biologic therapy. Biologic therapy, it's 20 years. Biologic therapy, there are three classes. There's anti-tumor necrosis factor, where it's Remicade, Humira, Simsia, and it's in that order of efficacy. One, two, three. They're not all the same. They're not. Now, there may be commercials saying that uh, one drug is the most uh, popular drug in the world, and it's the highest selling biologic anti-TNF agent. That's true, but you know, McDonald's is the number one hamburger in the world, but that doesn't mean it's the best burger. I would still prefer you take me to the 21 Club. So it's one, two, three. Then you have anti-integrin. Anti-integrin is vedolizumab. And then you have anti-IL-1223P40. That's ustekinumab, Stellara. So you have three classes of biologic agents. And then you have immunotherapy agents. It gets a little complicated now. The immunotherapy agents, things like methotrexate or 6MP, they, will, they are by definition immunosuppressives. The biologics are immune system mediators and can suppress your immune system and make you more likely to develop infections. So now you have, on our little planet, in 
this beautiful constellation of stars, the blue planet in our little constellation is having a big problem. It is. But all problems have four parts to them. It's confront, identify, fight, beat. Those are all problems in life. So we've confronted this problem. We identified it. Now we're fighting it. I have every confidence we're going to beat it. But you have these patients who are on agents that will suppress their immune system. Now what do we do? Because the people who are most at risk for a catastrophic consequence from coronavirus are those patients who are either elderly or immunosuppressed. So do I stop agents that are helping them as far as their immune-mediated inflammatory disorder, do I stop that medication? Because if they develop coronavirus, what's the possible consequence of having that agent on board when they meet this virus? This is tough. It's tough because there's no real answer to it yet. There are a couple of things we do know. Steroids. If you're on steroids, that's not a good thing. If you meet coronavirus and you're on steroids, that's not a good thing. Okay, you're on a biologic agent. You're on a biologic agent because you don't want to be on steroids. That's a good idea. Should patients just stop the biologic agent? Well, if you stop a biologic agent, some of them, some of them, if you try to restart a biologic agent, will be intolerant of that drug. They can develop antibodies to that drug because of episodic therapy. Not all the biologic agents are associated with that, but some of them are. Some of them have less immunogenicity less antigenicity. The newer ones are like that, but the older ones, you're at risk of stopping that drug and then trying to restart it, the one drug that worked for them, and they won't be able to tolerate it. But then you could say, well, if I stop that drug and then they flare again, I'll give them a different drug and they can tolerate it because there are a lot of choices. That's true. Just because you stop one biologic doesn't mean they have nothing left. They've got plenty of choices. But in order to recapture their responsiveness, you put them at risk for getting the one drug you don't want them on, which is prednisone. If you stop a biologic on someone who's doing well or doing better, and you stop it, and they start flaring, and then you give them steroids, you've given them the one drug you don't want them on. And then, are biologics safe in a patient with coronavirus? It turns out that coronavirus may actually, part of the deleterious consequences, could be mediated by TNF. For all we know, biologic agents are actually protecting people with coronavirus. It's unknown. It's unknown. This is uncharted territory. It's uncharted. Patients are going to ask a lot of good questions. All questions are good. Patients are going to ask questions and they have every right to. And the most humbling part of medicine is saying, I don't know. I don't know what cures, I don't know what causes Crohn's disease. I don't know how to cure Crohn's disease. In between those parts, in between those two points, I'm all right. I'm not that good at it. It's very humbling. So when patients say, should I stop this drug? Then you can say to them, if you stop the drug and you try to restart it, you may not tolerate it. If you don't tolerate it, we have plenty of other choices for you. But if you do flare when we stop this drug, then what'll happen is you may need prednisone. And that's the last drug you want when coronavirus is in the community. So that's one. What if they're on 6-MP or azathioprine or Imuran? Well, that's a different story. Then you have to be careful about medication-induced leukopenia. They can drop their white blood cell count. I would recommend that you repetitively check their white blood cell count, their absolute neutrophil count, and also their 6-thioguanine level. Because 6-MP or azathioprine is broken down into two metabolites, 6-MMP, which gives you a potential hepatotoxicity, and 6-TG, 6-thioguanine, where you, between these two numbers, usually like between 250 and 450, between those two numbers, that's the target range of what you're looking for. But if you go too high on the 6-thioguanine level, then you can have a leukopenia, and you drop their white count, and then you're immunosuppressing them, and then you're putting them at risk. So when there are immunotherapy agents, be careful. When there are biologics, be careful. When there are prednisone, be very careful. Patients will have numerous questions about should I stop medications? I don't know. I don't know. But what I do know is the art of medicine is talking face-to-face -face with someone. It's not texting. 
It's not talking on the phone. It's not FaceTiming. It's you pull up a chair, you have a conversation. I hope this conversation helps a little bit. In the meantime, we're halfway done because it's confront, identify, fight, beat. We're halfway there. I have full confidence that everybody in my community, in my country, and my planet will do just fine. Thank you.